All right. Hello, hello, guys. We are live. It is uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. It is May 5th, uh, Cinco de Mayo, a uh, day full of tacos and margaritas uh, here in the U.S. because for some reason that's what we associate with a uh, Mexican holiday. Uh, but whatever. Uh, so happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody there. Um, and uh, yeah, we are live once again Saturday 1 p.m. Uh, we missed last week because once again I was traveling guys. I was uh, on a job down in Austin, Texas. But I am back now. I'm in the studio here and all is as it should be. Um, and so it's good to be hanging out with you guys again. If it's your first time here, uh, welcome. I uh, appreciate you guys joining. Make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe and click that notification bell so you can join us every Saturday uh, when we go live and hang out here. Um, so since we are live today, of course, the beauty of live guys is that you get to hang out and interact with me. Uh, and I can pull your chat up on the screen if my chat cooperates. There we go. Um, so you can see right there up on the screen, I can pull the chat up and your chat will appear here. Um, so today what we're going to do guys, um, admittedly, I didn't really have time to get any sort of lesson or particular topic scheduled and planned. Um, I, uh, like I said, I was traveling, we had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and so I decided I would just do a little bit of a catch up with you guys today, let you know uh, what I've been up to, what I'm going to be up to, what I'm working on for the channel, because uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm juggling right now, um, and also just some life stuff. Um, so uh, as, as you guys saw from the title and the thumbnail, we've had a little bit of change in our... Uh, our population of our household here, and uh, we got a, uh, a puppy. Um, so I will uh, bring him up in a little bit. He's asleep under my desk right now, and him sleeping is a, uh, a rare thing. So uh, I'm gonna let him chill for a little bit until I'm ready to bring him up, and then he'll get rambunctious. So uh, we are kind of on his time and his schedule today, guys. Uh, so if he gets ornery, uh, we may have to call this a short stream. Uh, but I do want you guys to be able to uh, pop your questions into the chat if you have any, um, and uh, and I will answer those for you. So. Um, Let's get into it. So a brief update, as you guys know, I travel a lot for work and all sorts of stuff. So I was in Austin, Texas. Um, and before that, I had been all over the place, all over the US and also uh, went over to Portugal uh, for work. So the past few months have been ridiculously crazy. Um, and I've tried to keep up the schedule, at least with the live streams. We've missed a few here and there. Uh, but it looks like I'm not gonna have uh, any substantial travel uh, coming up uh, for the next month or so. Uh, so I'll be around, so I'm gonna, you know, get back to work and uh, get everything going here with the channel Because uh, we haven't had a lot going on in a while um, And yeah, it's hard to do that when I'm traveling uh, One of the things that I traveled to was NAB uh, So I went to NAB in Las Vegas. This was my fourth year going there um, And it was a great time. There was a lot of really cool stuff announced um, and I have done uh, a few shows about some of the stuff from NAB um, I do have a vlog style video walking you through what uh, what it was like to go through the first day of NAB. Um, so I'll put a link down in the description for you guys so you can check that out. Uh, we also did a live show with my friend uh, Devin Hansen. Um, and we did a little bit of a wrap up and talked about some of the stuff that we saw, some of the trends, what we think of some of the, the cameras and other things that were announced. Uh, so I'll put a link down in the description to that one too if you guys want to check that out in more detail. Uh, but if you have any questions here um, about anything from NAB or anything filmmaking whatsoever, um, go ahead and pop it in the chat and I will answer it for you. And if we don't have anybody pop in the chat because it's a beautiful Saturday out, I don't blame you. No problem. Um, so one thing that I do want to share with you guys, which I haven't really shared up until this point, you guys may know it if you follow me on, uh, on social media, um, but so my wife and I have uh, two Siberian Huskies, uh, one male, one female, right? Um, our male was 10 years old and our female is uh, about to turn seven. Um, we've had both of them since they were puppies. Uh, they grew up with us and everything. Uh, and of course we love them very much. Uh, well, back in March, while I was actually unfortunately away in Lisbon, Portugal, um, it turned out that 
very unexpectedly, um, our, our, our male, uh, the 10-year-old, he was, uh, that, well, they found that he had cancer. Um, and he had no signs or symptoms or anything like that up until the day of when he was acting kind of funky. Um, my wife took him in. He got checked out. They, they found this cancer. And unfortunately, we had to make a decision pretty much right then and there because it was so bad. Um, and so we had to say goodbye to him. Um, and that was really, really rough uh, on us. Uh, you know, we tried to keep up appearances and keep everything going, but it, it was very, very tough because, you know, he was like, you know, he's a family member. Um, so that was that was rough on us. Uh, and so we've been taking some time and adjusting and all of that. Uh, and we finally felt ready um, to uh, to bring another uh, husky into our home. Um, and so we adopted a, an eight week old puppy on Tuesday um, and brought him into our lives. Uh, and uh, he has been a complete handful. Um, and so I will introduce you guys to him right now because it doesn't look like we really have a lot of questions coming in, but that's just fine. So let me uh, clear the screen so you can see this, uh, this little guy and let me wake him up. This is, this is dangerous, but I'm going to do it for you guys. <laughs> Indy, little man. Come here, little man. All right. Here you go, guys. Uh, this is our eight week old Siberian Husky puppy. His name is Indy, uh, like Indiana Jones. Um, he's very sleepy right now. Uh, we got him on Tuesday, and he has been uh, keeping me on my toes, to say the least, guys. Um, so yeah, he's, uh, he's a sweetheart, but he is a husky puppy. So he's, uh, starting to chew on everything, getting into whatever trouble, gets bored very easily, um, and all that. And so he is here and, uh, who knows, he will probably end up making some appearances in more of my videos going on into the future. Um, because, uh, he is a full-time job in himself taking care of this little guy. And I'm going to put you back down. Is that okay? You say goodbye to everybody. All right, good boy, good boy, and here you go. Go ahead, take a nap, buddy. Hopefully, he'll he'll settle in and take a nap. Uh, so obviously, we've had a lot going on uh, in our personal lives, guys, uh, me and my wife. But that does not ever stop me from hanging out and interacting with you guys. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to continue the live shows every Saturday. Nothing is changing. Um, don't worry about that. And I do have a, uh, a lot of, uh, review content and other stuff coming. I've had my studio down in the basement that I'm working on getting set up. Um, it is just about ready. Um, I realized I was doing that thing where it's like, oh, well, I don't want to shoot in it until I get this one thing or this one thing. And you know what, when it boils down to it, you can shoot a YouTube video just in, in a, empty room with a white wall um, as long as the content is good so I uh, I wanted to uh, so I'm gonna start shooting um, in that studio I've got a bunch of, uh, of lights downstairs guys that I need to review um, and share with you including an RGB panel that looks really really cool it was one that was at NAB no it is not the aperture RGB um, but it is uh, it is a an RGB panel um, that I'm going to be reviewing and checking out uh, let's see what we got. Oh, DL is here. DL, yeah, that is uh, that is my new puppy. Um, in case you missed him, his name is Indy. Um, and, uh, and yeah, he uh, he's awesome, but he's going to make my life very, very challenging. The good thing is that uh, I work from home now, guys, whenever I'm not traveling. Um, so I am here all day. Um, and right now, that's what uh, a puppy of his age requires. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, my buddy DL and Aaron, Aaron Rosine is in here. Good to see you, man. Um, wanted to let you know my GH4 broke. Oh man, that's terrible. But I pre-ordered the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Very cool, man. Yeah. Um, I have not yet pre-ordered um, because I'm waiting just to see the footage. Uh, but uh, I know it is a really, really impressive camera. Um, so if I do get it, I'm probably going to have to wait a while because I'm sure like yourself, I'm sure a lot of people have pre-ordered them. So I'm sure the first batches are going to be, uh, uh, you know, flying off the shelves and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, um, I'll be interested to see what you think of the camera and, uh, congratulations. That's awesome. Um, I, it sucks that your GH4 broke, but you know, it's kind of like when, 
my my plasma TV years ago finally died. We're just watching something and it just boop cut out and went black. And I had this moment of like, oh man, like this sucks. But then it clicked in my mind. This means I get to get a new TV. Um, so look on the bright side of it, man. You know, you may have lost the GH4, but you've got that uh, that black magic pocket coming. And dude, if you ever uh, want to shoot. Um, raw and all the other stuff on there that requires CFast cards. Um, I have a ton of CFast cards. So hit me up and of course you can you can borrow them from me and um, and try those features out and stuff like that. So you don't have to invest hundreds of dollars in, in CFast cards. Uh, so just give me a call, man. Pretty sure you got my number. But anyway, you know how to get in touch with me. There we go. Uh, yeah, DL and Aaron having to chat in here. Uh, Jack White, how you doing, man? Uh, do you have any experiences with HDMI to SDI adapters? Are there any ways of getting around HDMI's lag with external recorders with the Pocket 4K camera? Uh, that's a good question. So I have used uh, a few things that will convert uh, HDMI to SDI, but I've never used just a dedicated adapter. I know uh, Blackmagic makes, uh, of course, a ton of little converters and adapters. Um, some that are even battery powered, I believe. Um, and they're, they're fairly affordable. I mean, you may be talking like a hundred bucks or something like that, but, um, yeah, the, as for the, uh, the lag with HDMI, as far as I know, uh, there is no way to get around that. Um, so it is a limitation of HDMI that there is a little bit of delay, um, some cameras it's better than others because it all depends on how quickly the camera can process that feed and push it out over HDMI. Um, but with HDMI, there's always an inherent lag uh, with uh, sound versus video. So when you're sending it to a recorder, sometimes you have to tell the recorder to do an offset of um, do an offset of like a few frames depending on uh, on the camera. I remember like the 5D Mark III. I think it used to be like like three frames difference. Um, so you would just delay your video by three frames so that when you're recording audio and video together in, uh, in the uh, recorder, um, they would match up. Um, but yeah, in terms of HDMI lag, uh, it is based on the camera. Um, so if the camera can't output fast enough over HDMI, there might be like a half second delay or stuff like that. Um, I've seen a lot of people thinking that um, when they're testing monitors, they're thinking that the monitor itself has the, the lag and the delay, but a lot of times it's on the camera end. Um, a lot of times it's just the camera can't push, push it out um, in real time. You know, it's a little bit, so it makes, you know, sometimes pulling focus and stuff like that a little bit difficult. Um, and you specifically mentioned the pocket 4k. That is one thing that is kind of disappointing with the pocket 4k is that, um, it is just HDMI output. I know, I know, like if you added SDI and all these other things to it, basically it becomes an Ursa Mini. Um, so I get why it has some limitations. Um, the other tricky thing with the, uh, with the HDMI on that, uh, that Blackmagic Pocket uh, Cinema Camera 4K is keep in mind, it can only output 1080. It does not push 4K out over HDMI. Um, so just something to be aware of. Although, uh, it does record all those flavors of ProRes and stuff internally, and usually when you're using an external recorder, that's why you're using an external recorder is because your camera doesn't record ProRes or something like that. Uh, but so the Pocket 4K will record ProRes internally, um, so you shouldn't necessarily need a recorder. Um, but yeah, it, it'll only output uh, 1080. So there you go. Long answer to the question, but hopefully I answered it for you. Uh, and I see Trevor is in here too. Good to see you, buddy. Um, and he's, he's saying the same thing. You can't eliminate all of the lag. It's just inherent in transmission of the video signal. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, Aaron says, uh, I know Atomos actually makes an adapter for SDI to HDMI and vice versa. Do they still make those? I remember... I remember they had those uh, a long time ago. I'm not sure, I, have they updated them or done anything? Because they had them and they took like a, like an LPE6 battery on the back, so they were a nice little thing. You just pop a little battery on it and it would run. Um, and yeah, they did have, it was like, it was like S and then the number two and then H is their like uh, SDI to HDMI and then H2 
S is the other way around. Um, but yeah, if they do still have those available, uh, maybe um, take a look at those, Jack, uh, and see if, um, if people have had good experiences with them. I haven't used them specifically. Aaron, let me know, have you actually used any of those uh, converters and all that stuff? Because uh, I'd be interested. Uh, Trevor says, uh, this is one of the areas that differentiates a pro camera from a prosumer camera. SDI makes a big difference. Yeah, um, it is true. You, you don't really see SDI on what we consider to be prosumer cameras. Uh, prosumer, of course, being a, a hybrid of consumer and, and professional. Um, you know, it's all arbitrary, uh, you know, defining cameras as pro or prosumer because, you know, what are the criteria for that? Um, but yeah, you're right. Um, SDI is, it makes a big difference. Um, SDI is usually a quicker signal that's going out. It's also a powered signal. Um, and what I mean by that is it can go long runs without having to put um, what they call a repeater in it. So HDMI has a limit for how long your cable can be before your signal starts breaking up. And then you need to connect it to this little power box uh, called a repeater that basically like repowers the signal and shoots it out. But SDI is a powered signal that goes all the way. So you can do huge long runs and it's really reliable. Um, and then, you know, now with like 12G SDI and stuff like that, we can push like some pretty serious 4K signals and beyond. Um, and that's pretty cool. So yeah, SDI in a camera, uh, once you get a camera that does have it, you will see the benefits of it. Um, because I was an all HDMI guy. Um, and now, uh, you know, obviously Ursa Mini, I'm SDI with that. Um, so I've got SDI monitors and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and I do prefer SDI. Uh, that little locking connector, reliable cables, all that stuff. But you know, HDMI is, is good too. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So there we go. I mean, it works. So, um, Aaron says, uh, I thought the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k had a mini SDI. Does it have a mini SDI? Am I just like completely making this up? It might now that you say it, it's hang on. I'm going to pull it up here. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Do, do, do. Sorry, guys. Uh, while I'm looking this up, uh, Aaron says, I use one of the Atomos ones. He's talking about those adapters uh, that I rented out on KitSplit. I also jerry-rigged an adapter from Amazon uh, to work with USB power. So there you go. Um, if that works for you, I'd be interested in seeing how you uh, how you put that, uh, that Amazon thing together. Uh, do, 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 do. Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, I just want to make sure I'm actually telling the truth. Tech specs. No. Okay. So here we go, guys. Let me pull this up. I wasn't prepared for this, but we'll see what we can do here. Let me get this over here. Okay. So we're looking at all the tech specs here. So it says here, total video outputs. It's just one uh, HDMI type A, which is uh, full size HDMI, uh, I believe. So here we go. So top, we want to see the outputs. Here we go. Uh, so these are the connectors. So this might have been what you were thinking was a, uh, a mini XLR. Um, or sorry, it is it is basically a mini XLR. You meant uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm losing it. Mini SDI. Um, so no, this is uh, this is a new power connector here, um, and then they have mini XLR for audio, uh, USB C. There's that full size Type A HDMI, and that is your only video output on this guy. So no HDMI on that right there. Um, yeah. But I'm glad we checked, because uh, even though I, you know, held held the thing in my hands and looked at it, you know, that was coming up on about a month ago. So I had a needed a little uh, little refresh. So there we go. Uh, Trevor says, uh, but the argument for HDMI versus SDI is still all correct. So what is the argument for HDMI versus SDI? Um, let me know. Um, 
but let's see here. Aaron says, oh, I don't know why they thought that. It's okay. Uh, I thought it could be plausible, too, as soon as you said it. I was like, maybe I should uh, go and check that out. So thanks for bringing that up. I'm glad we were able to go and uh, clear that up uh, for not only you, but for me. Um, so there we go. Uh, Trevor says uh, that mini XLR is a pro feature uh, to have right in the body, though. Yeah. So that mini XLR in the Black Magic Pocket, um, let me pull it up again so you guys know what we're talking about. Uh, this mini XLR here, um, that is nice. You know, it's not full size XLR. Um, of course, that would require the camera to be bigger, there'd be more guts in it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you, you can adapt this, you can get a, a cable that's probably mini XLR to full size so that you can plug it into any mics or anything like that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be nice to have because XLR audio really is the way to go. Um, I've never been a big fan of, uh, you know, 3.5 mil, uh, which they do still have. Uh, so you can connect like a, you know, a 3.5 millimeter, uh, mic cable into this and run that there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the option to have uh, mini XLR and with the phantom power, that's a big deal because there's a lot of shotgun mics that require phantom power and stuff like that. Um, that is uh, a quote unquote pro feature. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool that they have that there. All right, let's come back to here. Uh, Aaron says smiley face. So uh, I guess we, we were able to clear that up. Um, so yeah, guys, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, I knew, I knew we'd be talking about the pocket 4k camera. Um, a lot of people have a lot of questions about it. Um, I've done a full live show just on the pocket 4k camera. Um, so I'll put a link to that down in the description for you guys too. If you want to go ahead and check that guy out, um, really went into depth, shared some photos and stuff where I was holding it and did some comparison photos. Uh, next to like the GH5 for size and stuff like that. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but let's see here. Trevor says, uh, you can run all your road NTG2, NTG4, et cetera, right into the body. Yeah, so he's talking about with that mini XLR with phantom power. Yeah, those kind of shotgun mics, like the roads um, that are super popular, um, but require phantom power, you're good. Um, phantom power is uh, a good thing to have. Um, so you can really up the audio quality of your run and gun type setup, uh, being able to, to put a, a decent mic that requires phantom power on that camera. However, the camera doesn't have a freaking hot shoe. Um, found that really interesting. Like, yeah, you can modify something to add it on there, but yeah, I mean, take a look at this guys. Where's the... Well, here's the bottom with that tripod mount mounting point. Let's see what they call it on top. They just call it a mounting point. Uh, so yeah, no uh, no hot shoe on uh, on this guy. So they they made it so that you can easily uh, you know attach any mic you want in terms of connections, but they made it impossible to just directly attach a microphone to it. Uh, so that's. That's kind of interesting. I mean, this is this is threaded. This is, uh, you know, a quarter 20 thread there. So you can get one of the, you know, a little just uh, cold shoe mount that you can just screw down onto this. Uh, but yeah, it would have been nice to have something just actually built into the body. I mean, um, this camera is, you know, they're calling it the pocket, but the idea is that it's a small little thing. You shouldn't have to bolt other stuff onto it to be able to, you know, kit it out a little bit. That'd be nice just to have uh, a hot shoe on that thing. Um, but they made the design choice not to include it. And actually, I don't know that any of their cameras have ever had a hot shoe uh, or, or cold shoe um, attachment point on it. Um, the Ursa Mini does not. Um, I'm pretty sure their... Uh, I know the original Pocket did not, and I'm pretty sure all their other box cameras that they used to make and you know the original cinema cameras they didn't have it either and that kind of stuff so um i'd be interested to see what people's solutions are to do that um i see trevor is asking there um uh imagine what kind of cage is going to go on this thing uh yeah i i've been wondering that too and i've been wondering are people going to put cages on it 
because uh, it's it's beefy. I mean, it's like I've said in a few other things. It's about like a 5D Mark III if you like stretched it a little bit wider. That's what it feels. It's you know it's chunky. It's not heavy, um, and it's going to be actually even lighter because the prototypes that we had at NAB were uh, aluminum, and it's going to be this uh, carbon fiber composite material in the end. So it will be lightweight, uh, light weighted a little bit. But yeah, I don't know about cages. I haven't seen any companies coming out with designs for cages um, yet. Uh, you know, I haven't seen Small Rig or, or anybody actually come out with any prototypes for this. So uh, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be like to, to kit that camera out. We're not trying to scare you, Aaron. Uh, I know you pre-ordered one, um, but I'd be interested to see what, uh, what you're thinking your solution might be uh, for it. Because there's no wrong way to do it. Uh, it's just, you know, the way that works for you. And, uh, you know, it could be something as simple as just threading a, uh, an, an additional uh, cold shoe mount on top of it and you're good to go. You know, problem solved. Um, so there you go. Trevor's saying, yeah, maybe Tilta and those guys will make some kind of half cage. Yeah, because you wouldn't necessarily want a full cage on that thing because uh, it does have a good grip. Um, you know, it has a very decent grip. Uh, there's no need to add more gripping points on it and you don't want something getting in between your hand and the grip if you had like a full cage around it. Um, so yeah, a half cage could probably could probably work. Uh, you know, something just C-shaped that goes around the side of that camera. Let's, uh, let's pull it up and speculate here. Um, I love that this has become like another, uh, <laughs> just another uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K show. But that's okay, guys. Like I said, I'm here to answer whatever questions you may have. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe like a C-shaped cage that goes like here. You know, leaving this grip this grip side here open for you to grip. Um, yeah, because is there anything on that side? Oh, there. Okay, so all of your inputs are on that side. So that would have to be kind of. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a cage designer, but we'll we'll, we'll see what uh we'll see what comes out. Um, out of that we'll just have to wait and see but yeah Aaron says yeah I'll let you know thanks man yeah definitely I'd be interested in checking that thing out especially if uh, if you get that pre-order in already and you uh, maybe you made the cutoff to get the uh, the first uh, round of uh, shipments um, then uh, that'd be cool to uh, to see what you think of it uh, you might be one of the first people to have one that'd be pretty cool um, and you say your fault for bringing it up no man it's all good I'm here for you guys to bring stuff up um, and talk about it today. So that's good. Otherwise, I would have just be a guy sitting in a room with a puppy sleeping under his desk, just talking to nobody on the internet. So I appreciate it, man. That's good stuff. But yeah, guys, um, following along that thread, if you guys have anything else uh, that you want to talk about, um, you know, any questions on any other gear that was uh, announced at NAB, or questions on uh, just anything else filmmaking. Like I said, um, I gave you guys the rundown on, uh, on what's been going on with me and that I am back home and should be able to, to get some, uh, some videos cranking out uh, this month, hopefully. Um, that's all, of course, up to my new uh, executive producer, Mr. Indy, who's sleeping under the desk. Um, because when he is not sleeping, he requires full attention. Um, so hopefully I can uh, get him onto a decent nap schedule where I can sneak down to the studio and, uh, and shoot some videos and stuff like that. Uh, because he does like to chew on cables. Uh, so I'll tell you that. If you have issues with cable management and uh, you have cables all on the floor and just messy and stuff like that, get a puppy. Uh, because they will force you to do some cable management and get all those cables up off the floor uh, as best as possible, I'll tell you that. Um, luckily, my desk and everything, I, I spent days and days when I got this thing set up and installed and did some proper cable management. Um, but yeah, he still finds little ones. Like, uh, like over here, I still need to deal with this mess of cables, um, not only because it's ugly, but because it's out on the floor. Um, and he found that like right away. Um, so I sort of shoved everything back behind the printer for right now, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Trevor says, uh, are you running a GH5 or not? What's your small body camera? So yeah, Trevor, I do have, uh, a GH5. Um, and, uh, actually it's 
right there on the shelf. Usually it's my 5D Mark III that's back here because it doesn't get a whole lot of use these days, so it's become sort of a background prop. Uh, but it is out on a rental right now. Someone has rented it from me. Um, so I have the GH5. I love the GH5. I bought it uh, specifically to be a small YouTube camera. Um, I was tired of setting up the Ursa Mini and all this stuff every time I wanted to shoot something. And uh, and so I was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll pick something up. And so yeah, I got the GH5 and now I've shot a lot of projects with it and I absolutely love it. Um, so the camera that I'm actually using right now uh, is the Panasonic G7. So I bought this thing specifically because once again, uh, first world problems, uh, I got tired of taking the GH5 off of this mount um, when I went out to shoot and then having to put it back and get everything reframed and all that kind of stuff uh, whenever I was doing a show. So uh, they were on sale. They keep having these sales on the G7s where they dip to like five, 600 bucks. Um, so I waited for one of those, picked up a G7, and now it just permanently lives on this mount uh, for my live streaming setup. Um, so admittedly, I haven't ever shot anything else uh, with this camera. I don't think it's ever even actually recorded a single frame of video. I turned it on, plugged the HDMI in, mounted it up there, and there she sits. So I don't know, maybe one day I'll need an additional cam and I'll, I'll grab that there. But uh, the G7, 4K capable, even though I'm just using it for 1080. Um, obviously, nowhere near all the features of the GH5 and stuff like that, uh, but a really good camera. I mean, quality-wise, I like the color uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if they go on sale again um, and dip down there, I would pick one up, guys, just as a, a secondary camera, especially if you're already shooting Panasonic, if you're shooting like a GH5 or something like that. Uh, G7, perfect B cam. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Trevor says, I prefer to shoot in cinema 4K, uh, but I'm starting to play with VFR. That's variable frame rate. Um, and I'm noticing some artifacting at the higher frame rates. What's your experience been for the sweet spot for quality uh, super slow-mo? Okay, so just so everybody knows what Trevor's mentioning here, uh, he likes to shoot in cinema 4K. And cinema 4K is sort of, um, it's, it's a little bit wider than what we call UHD 4K. So UHD 4K is a perfect 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's um, 38, 38, 40 by 2160. Yeah, there we go. I had to think about the numbers. Um, but 3840 by 2160, uh, and so that's 4K almost, you know, 3800 pixels almost 4,000, um, and so it, uh, it, it's what we usually think of as 4K, um, you know, for our TVs and stuff like that, they're UHD, ultra high definition, 4K for the consumer, it's whatever. Uh, but cinema 4K is actually 4096 pixels, so it is truly over 4K, and so it's a little bit wider on the edge of the frames, just a little bit. Not enough that you're like, oh, that's widescreen, but it's it's what they call the cinema format, and it is actually what a lot of uh, cinemas display 4K content at is cinema 4K. Okay, so we went over that. Um, but now he's talking about shooting with variable frame rate. Uh, in the GH5, you can shoot 1080 up to 180 frames per second. Uh, I think I got that right, yeah. Um, and it conforms it in camera. So that means it actually does the translation of it in camera to slow motion. Um, so anything over 60 frames per second on that camera is only available in this VFR mode where it automatically does it. At 60, you have the option of shooting in 60 and letting the camera turn it into 30p or 24p slow motion, or you can record just 60p, and then you can decide whether you want to slow it down in post to 24 or 30, whatever. Um, but these VFR modes, it's done in the camera. Now he's saying that he's getting some artifacting at the higher frame rates. And yes, people have reported that. They have reported that at 180 frames per second, the image does have some quality issues because uh, you're really pushing it. So I have shot some stuff in 180 frames per second and uh, it looked pretty good unless you're like pixel peeping it. Um, but generally people say that the sweet spot for the GH5 in slow motion is around 120. 
um, because you're not pushing it so hard um, and and that still gives you great slow motion I mean it's gonna be if you put it on 30p timeline you're talking you know 25% speed um, but yeah 120 I would I would play with that a little bit and uh, and see if that works for you because that's what I've seen and what I've experienced to kind of be that sweet spot for where your slow motion should be on that. Um, so let's see here. Uh, is it Noir at Blanc V? Uh, I think I've I think I've said your name before and I got it right. So hopefully I got it right uh, that time as well. Uh, but he's asking uh, which ND filters do I use on my Ursa Mini? So I have a Tiffin variable ND filter that I use. Um, and it's good for a lot of uh, a lot of my cameras, but with the Ursa Mini, the Ursa Mini has a, a specific thing where it is really susceptible to uh, infrared IR. So the camera does not have an IR filter in it, um, which is a shame. And so what this does is when you have like black clothing or you know just blacks and you're outside in the sunlight. Um, it can look a little bit red because what's happening is actually the infrared light is getting into uh, the camera and is being recorded by the sensor. Um, and there's lots of videos online that have demonstrated this. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, go ahead and uh, and just do a search for um, uh, Ursa Mini IR pollution. Uh, it should come up with something for you. But yeah, it. Uh, so what you want to be able to add, whether you stack another filter or something like that, is uh, an IR cut filter. Um, and so that will block that uh, infrared light. This is specifically for the Ursa Mini and some other uh, cinema cameras. Most cameras do have some sort of IR filter in front of the, um, in front of the sensor already. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna wanna get an IR filter. And if you can find a combination IR cut and ND, then that's the way to go. Now, there are some insanely high quality ones from a company called Format High Tech. Um, they have their Firecrest series and they do have IR cut NDs. Um, they are a couple hundred dollars a piece, uh, depending on the size of the filter that you need. Usually I need 77 mil and they are just, um, they are just single, uh, single set stops. They're not variable, so you'll have to get a few of them for different values of ND. Um, but I would look into those because uh, they, are, they are quality. So I have their um, just IR cut, and so I will actually add the IR cut to the lens, and then I'll add an ND filter um, on top of that. So I'm kind of stacking filters, so it's not the greatest solution in the world. Really, it would be easier to have like a matte box where you could put an IR cut and and these in there. Uh, but you know, I thread onto my lenses. I don't have a matte box set up. Um, but yeah, look at Format High Tech and their Firecrest uh, IR ND filters. Um, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, Drew Hester, good to see you, buddy. Uh, yes, you you just made it. We're uh, we're still here hanging out. My puppy has allowed us to have the show go on for almost 40 minutes so far. He's been napping. Um, that's pretty good. I'll bring him out again before I close the show. I don't want to wake him up right now. It's going to be, whoo, he'll, he'll be antsy. 45 minutes of napping means he's going to have like two hours of running around. Um, but yeah, Trevor also says, uh, yeah, you'll want the combo IR cut ND filters, which cost a penny or two. Yeah, I'd say so. Or you can uh, stack IR cut. Um, oh, so you, you have an SLR magic variable ND with an IR or, and an additional IR cut filter. Um, so you're doing similar to what I'm doing. I have a, a Tiffin variable ND and I have the format high tech firecrest and, or firecrest IR cut filter. So IR cut filter to block that infrared, then variable ND on top of it. Um, so yeah. Uh, and oh, somebody dropped and broke your, uh, your variable ND. $200 a pop, man. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not cheap. And uh, good pronunciation. Yes, awesome. Um, I probably didn't pronounce pronunciation very well there, though. Uh, so I guess I'm back to even now. Uh, but yeah. All right. So I think we made it through all of that stuff. We, we talked about IRND and all that. 
So what I'm going to do, guys, because uh, I really am worried about this guy recharging his battery too much, um, is we're going to start closing the show out here. I really appreciate you guys who were in here and asking questions. Hopefully, I was able to help you guys out there. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this show wrapped up. So we will have a show next week. Uh, I do not know right now what uh, what our topic will be, uh, but I will come up with something and I will get that posted. Uh, so make sure that you are subscribed and click that notification bell uh, because then you will know exactly when we are live and what we're gonna be talking about next week. Uh, so we'll get all of that put together. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and close us out, guys. Uh, but one last thing, just like I promised, we're going to uh, let Mr. Indy say goodbye with us. So let's uh, let's get him up. Indy. Indy. Come on. Oh, you lazy dog. Come here, buddy boy. All right. He was starting to wake up on his own. So this is probably a good time to say goodbye. All right, Indy. Can you say goodbye to everybody out there? Look in the camera. Oh, nice big yawn. Here we go. Put you up here. All right, guys. Uh, so there we go. My new executive producer. Oh, and he's just taking a nap, like, right at the keyboard. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, guys, thanks again for joining. Um, we are uh, We're going to keep everything going, and uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Indy, appreciate you guys hanging out. He's just right here on the desk. Um, but yeah, guys, we will see you uh, next week. And uh, until then, you guys take care. All right, see ya. Indy, get off the keys.